right, hey, today we're going to take a quick look at how to use our Texas Instrument Calculator and go through a few quick tips to make your work a little bit easier and a little bit quicker. So today we're going to focus on problems that might look like this with fractions and also talking about how to use the negative key um, and make sure that we're typing everything correctly. So this is a problem we're going to start with. We'll move on to a second example with some mixed numbers next. Um, but to start with this one, the very first thing we see is that there's a negative in this one. So when you take a look at your calculator, a lot of people are tempted to go ahead and push this key for subtraction when they need a negative. But if I push that right away, you'll see that it says ANS, or that stands for answer. And it's going to take the previous answer, and then it's going to subtract whatever I tell it to do next. And that's not what we want it to do in this problem. We just want to have a negative two-fifths. Okay, so instead of pushing that minus sign right there, we're gonna go ahead and hit this key down here. This is a negative key and it just has a parenthesis around it right now. When I press that one, the negative sign is a little bit smaller and it's a little bit higher up than that minus button. So when you're going back, you can always check and make sure you hit the correct button. Okay, the next thing we need is to enter our fraction of two fifths. Um, the easiest way to do this on this calculator is to use the fraction button right here, which is that ABC button that you see right there. Okay, it kind of looks a little bit like a fraction. And it's going to format it like this. We need to enter two fifths, so I'm going to type in two, and then I'm going to hit the fraction button. It's going to type in like a little backwards L, and then my five for the two fifths. Okay, the formatting looks a little different, but that's how your calculator registers fractions. Then we need plus three, eight, so plus three, then I'm going to hit the fraction button, and then the eight. And that's all I need to do for this answer. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my answer, and I get negative one fortieth. And then I could write that down as my answer. For our second example, we're going to go ahead and practice some mixed numbers. So we have 6 and 2 ninths times 2 and 4 fifths. So our calculator is super smart. We're going to use that same fraction button, that ABC button, to go ahead and enter this. Um, we're just going to type in our whole number first, so 6. Then we're going to hit the fraction button. And then we're going to type in our 2 ninths, so 2, fraction button again. 9. It's going to look like this. Um, it might look a little bit confusing to you, but your calculator is programmed to go ahead and understand that this is 6 and 2 ninths. Okay, we're going to multiply it by 2 and 4 fifths. Okay, so there's a whole problem. We're going to hit enter. And the formatting when we get an answer for this might look a little bit goofy. Okay, it says 17, then there's a U. That's a space that's separating our whole number from our fraction. So this is 17 and 19 45ths. And that would be our final answer for this question. All right, this type of problem here, converting between fractions and decimals, is one of my favorite uses for a calculator. Um, this one says convert 3 fifths to a decimal. And you might already know this as a decimal, um, but if you didn't, the fastest way to do this is to remember that fractions are really taking the numerator divided by the denominator. So one strategy we could use would be to use long division and set up three divided by five. However, I'm not a big fan of long division. I don't want to spend the time doing that. So if I have my calculator, all I'm going to do is simply type in three divided by five, hit enter, and it's going to give me the decimal that is equivalent to three fifths. The final skill we're going to look at using our calculator is converting decimals to fractions. So for this example, we have convert 0.625 to a fraction. Okay, your calculator has a super handy button, but it's a little hard to find. It converts between fractions and decimals. So right above this PRB on this calculator, you'll see in purple, it says F to D, meaning we can convert back and forth between fractions and decimals. Okay, but to access that key, if I just push on the PRB right now, I end up with some probability calculations, and that's not what I want. So since it's in purple on this calculator, the second button is also purple, so I will use second, and then I will press PRB, and it's gonna take whatever I have typed in and convert it from a fraction to a decimal or a decimal to a fraction. But first I need to get the correct decimal typed in. So I could go ahead and type in 0 0.65, or I can just type in 0 0.625. Then I'm going to use second, and then the PRB to access my fraction to decimal. I'll hit enter, and it's going to tell me that 0.625, or 625 thousandths, is equal to 5 eighths as a fraction. This feature is kind of nice because it already gives you the fraction in simplest form as well. <laughs> 